and welcome to Pre-K with Miss K. We have another mini lesson. It's all about backyard birds. Today I am joined by Mr. Bear. Let's get started. First we're going to read about feathers and wings. Early in the morning you hear a bird singing outside. Cheer up, cheerily, cheer up. What kind is it? You grab a pair of binoculars. Following the sound, you spot the bird in a tree. It's a robin. The next time you hear that song, you'll know what kind of bird is nearby. Binoculars make faraway things look closer. They help you observe animals at a distance without disturbing them. Mr. Bear brought his pair of binoculars today. And where do we put them? You hold them up to your eyes. Good job. Did you know Ornithology is the scientific study of birds. Can you say that big word? Ornithology. How many syllables? Ornithology. Five syllables. Let's try it. Ready? Ornithology. And that's the study of birds. A scientist, a person who studies those birds, would be an ornithologist. So ornithologists observe birds the same way using binoculars. Around the world, ornithologists have identified more than 10,000 species of birds, from the penguins in Antarctica to the birds of paradise in the Indonesian rainforest. Birds are vertebrates that have feathers, a beak, two legs, and two wings. Ornithologists do more than identify species and study birds' songs and calls. They also study what the birds eat and how they raise their young. From season to season, the scientists keep track of when and where birds migrate, and they give the best advice about what kind of food to use in your bird feeders. Some bird species live in one place all year. Others, like the snow geese, migrate which means they move to warmer places during the winter. Most birds build nests for their eggs and raise their chicks there. Let's see this. Here are the different bird body parts. So there are feathers, a beak, legs, wings, head, and a tail. Those are all parts of a bird's body. Let's see our backyard birds. These are four types of birds that we see in our backyard. Maybe you've seen them too. We're going to start with the Northern Cardinal. Do you know what color the Northern Cardinal is? Red. It's red. That's right. Well, guess what? The male Cardinals are red, but the female Cardinals are a different color. They are brown. The special thing about Cardinals is they're songbirds. They like to sing. One extra special fact is that the female Northern Cardinals, the brown birds, also sing. Usually it's the male songbirds that sing, but something special about the Northern Cardinal is that the female Cardinals also sing. A fun fact about Cardinals is also that they do not migrate. We just read about that. Migrating is when they fly south to warmer weather in the winter. Cardinals do not migrate. You can see them in the winter time where you live. Cardinals also, one of their main things cardinals like to eat is sunflower seeds. We're going to use some sunflower seeds when we make our bird feeder at the end of the mini lesson. Our next bird up is a blue jay. A thumbs up if you've seen a blue jay before. Blue jays are also a songbird that like to sing. They like to eat acorns and peanuts and suet cakes square packages you can buy at the store with oil and fat and bird seed. And so blue jays like to eat suet cakes. The very special fact about a blue jay is that the pigment in their feathers is called melanin. That's like the pigment in our skin. It's usually a brown color. But if the pigment in the feathers is brown, why does it look blue, right? If there's melanin in the feathers, it should be brown and not blue. Well, this is what I learned and I never knew this. The blue color is caused by scattering light through all the modified cells on the surface of the feather barbs. 
Do you know that? The blue color of the blue jay is caused by scattering light all through the modified cells on the surface of the feather barbs. It's a really interesting fact. Our next backyard bird is the Baltimore Oriole. Do you know what color they are? Orange. Orange, that's right. Again, here we have another instance where the male and the female are different colors. The or male Baltimore Oriole is orange. The female looks more yellowish, okay? Orioles like to eat insects like flies and grasshoppers and crickets. They also eat fruit and nectar. We have a special feeder for our Orioles. What do we put on that feeder, Mr. Bear? Jelly and oranges. That's right, we slice oranges and put jelly in it too. We'll show you a picture of that in the video as well. Something special about the Baltimore Oriole is its nest. The Baltimore Oriole's nest is a sock-like hanging nest. It hangs all the way down like that. It, it's woven from slender fibers like grass and wool or sometimes twine or rope, whatever that the bird can find, whatever the Oriole finds, it will weave it into this long sock-like hanging nest. Do you know it can take the Orioles up to a week to build their nest? That's pretty neat, isn't it? Our last backyard bird is the Hummingbird, that's one of our favorites. This hummingbird is the ruby-throated hummingbird. They like orange and red flowers. They do migrate, it gets too cold in the winter. Some hummingbirds migrate to Central America. Did you know their wings have to beat so fast? It'll go 53 times every second. So by the time you snap your fingers, it's, it's flapped its wings 53 times every time you snap. That seems almost impossible, doesn't it? Hummingbirds also have extremely short legs. So guess what? I didn't know this. Hummingbirds are not able to walk or hop. They have to shuffle along. Here is our hummingbird feeder and we make the mixture inside by using one cup of sugar to four cups of water. And there's no need to dye it red. The hummingbirds are attracted to the red part of this feeder. This one has been our hummingbird's favorite feeder. I'll add some videos in to show you. Something special about a hummingbird nest is it's teeny, teeny, tiny. Because hummingbirds are tiny, so their nest has to be tiny too. This nest looks to be about the size of a penny. Can you imagine? That would be really hard to find a hummingbird nest because it would be teeny tiny, about the size of maybe a couple of pennies. Thumbs up if you like learning all about our backyard birds. Most of my information today came from allaboutbirds.org. I'll have a link to that as well. If you want to do something really fun this winter, you can join a program called feederwatch.com. You have to provide your own feeder and your own seeds, but you count the birds that you see and you send the counts to them. It costs $18 and you can also give it as a gift. Something else I wanted to share with you that is an app that I have on my smartphone. It's called Seek, S-E-E-K by iNaturalist. You can not only identify all different birds that you see, you can identify plants, fish, Anywhere you go, you just take a picture with the app and it'll identify the birds and the plants and anything in nature that's all around. It's really fun and we use it on vacation a lot too. Okay, it's time for us. We're gonna make our own bird feeder. Our bird feeder idea is from practicallyfunctional.com. Let's get started. For our bird feeder today, all you need is a paper towel tube, some string or yarn or twine, scissors, peanut butter, and of course some bird. bird seed. First things first, we're gonna cut it in half. Okay, we take our part and we're gonna spread the peanut butter.
Once you have the peanut butter on your roll, what do we need next, Mr. Bear? Bird seed. Bird seed. You can pour some on and then we'll roll it. Okay, we we'll pour some. Okay. All right, then we take the extras and roll it around. We have sunflower seeds. We know the cardinals like that. It's got millet and cracked corn. Once you have your toilet paper tube covered, you're gonna stick your string in. Okay, and then you tie it up and then you're ready to go hang it on your tree. Pretty cool, huh? One last thing we want to mention before we go is that Mr. Bear has a really special shirt on today. Can you stand up? It's from the Mia Foundation. What What's on your shirt, Mr. Bear? A, a pigeon and a dog. A pigeon and a dog. That's right. Herman and Lundy. About a pigeon who was rescued and has a new best friend, a little chihuahua. I will put a link for you to be able to find it. So we're gonna go outside and look for some more videos and nests that we'll put at the end and then we'll see you guys next week. Hi friends, Miss Kay here. Mr. Bear and I found a nest in one of our trees and it has an egg in it. Here's one of our hanging bird houses and you can see the birds even have some of the sticks and stuff hanging out of it. We don't wanna disturb in case they've got a nest in there. Hi friends, here's another one of our nests by our garage. And it looks like there's even a little baby bird sleeping in there.